What is going on, everybody? Nico here with the Wooden Spoon. I hope everyone's having a great start to the new year. This is the third episode of the year. Ah, right on track. We're doing one a week. We haven't missed a week yet. I know it's only been three, but we're staying on track. Yeah, so um, it's just been a slow January so far. Just uh, hitting the gym. It's like another New Year's resolution. Make it some content for you guys. Love doing that always. Um, yeah, other than that, not much going on. I'm pumped um, for this episode of the podcast. We have a guest on. He is a stand-up comic. He does sets all over New York City. So it's cool to talk to somebody who's actively um, doing comedy, like in New York, like, and it's working their way up the ladder. I don't know if you've seen, but we posted um, a bit of his on the Wooden Spoon on the Instagram, where he talks about um, his professor. Um, he said, oh, if your phone rings in class, we answer it. And he answered and he and his phone rang and he answered it and it was his Sicilian dad who said, you put my fucking son on the phone. <laughs> and so that was fun. So we dive into talking about that. But um, our guest's name is James Pantillo. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy the episode. All right, guys, I'm pumped to um, introduce our guest. He is a stand-up comic uh, and a producer of the New York Comedy Club Roast Battle. We got yeah. James Pantillo, Pantillo, how is it? Pantillo, yeah. Pantillo, okay. Pantillo. All right, yeah, man, how's yeah, it going? You know, you already know to pronounce the L's. That's how I know you're Italian. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, because I'm from, I'm originally from, I'm Buffalo, so everyone calls oh, me. Oh, really? Can, yeah, everybody calls me Canadian, and like, <laughs> because I say yeah. it, Italian weird. For some reason, I don't think I say it, but I'll come yeah. to New York, or I'll talk to you, like, yo, you say that weird, or my TikTok will get yeah. flooded. Like, and yo, by the way, Leah, it Italians moved to Canada, too. They didn't just move to America. <laughs> yeah, Toronto. I mean, I've got family in all over Canada, too, so it's like... Oh, really? There's so many yeah, Italians. Yeah, we're all over. Yeah, like, Toronto is flooded. There's so many, especially in, like, Woodbridge area. So shout yeah. out to all my Toronto Italians. But yeah, man, what's going on? How's, uh, how's 2022 treating you? good so far so good good the clubs have been slowly getting back the comedy club has slowly been getting back so that's been good yeah i was at uh where'd i go i went to the comedy cellar and i saw colin quinn and then jim norton um came up wow. yeah so i got lucky Wait, I actually i got super lucky um last summer i went to because i've never seen chris Stefano. And um, I saw he was at, he was on the comedy cellar. I was like, oh, cool. I'll go see him. And the second comic, Louis C.K. popped up. I go, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, so I've wow, been, so yeah, I've been lucky with my <laughs> going to the comedy clubs in New York. I'm, a, I'm such a huge stand-up fan. And then I saw New York Comedy Club posted uh, your bit about uh, your Sicilian dad. And um, I, had, <laughs> yeah. I had to shoot you a message not- to get you on the podcast. Oh, I appreciate it. You know, it's so funny because even though it's not technically a comedy, the the movie Goodfellas kind of got me into stand up, even though it wasn't really a comedy. Although there's so many comedic moments in that movie, oh, but that's sure. what got me into stand up. That movie. Yeah. So, what in particular was there like a scene or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a couple. There was, there was a couple. Uh, there was a couple of scenes for sure. Uh, the first one. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. The cat been so long since i've seen that movie oh. it's just so many good clips there is a there's a there's a scene actually of them at i don't know if they're at a comedy club or at a restaurant oh yeah but, yeah, uh, yeah. They, you they know what i'm a, talking about right yeah same thing with the sopranos there's like a comic uh there's an episode where they have like this recurring character who's a comic and they're always bad all these mafia movies the comedians terrible all the time i know i know who was it? i think was it jim norton that played don wrinkles in the irishman though yeah, that was Jim Norton. Yeah. yeah. So they were getting Irish are not my favorite are getting better the, with the comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Irish are not my favorite out of all of them, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't terrible. But no, you can't beat Goodfellas or anything no. like that. No, definitely not. That was I've seen that movie. Yeah, they had they had time. the one liner comic, the one that the guy that just does the one liners. He was so bad though, yeah. <laughs> he was awful. I mean I love this I love the scene where Henry uh he stopped showing up to school and like the mailman's obviously just doing his job and bringing the mail with his, yeah. that's how his parents find out and he wasn't going to school and then the of course their reaction is to threaten to burn him in the oven just, just yeah. don't ever deliver mail to these kids house again <laughs> from that school it was just perfect 
Yeah. So what was, uh, like, what, when did you first realize you wanted to kind of get into stand up comedy? I am about six years in right now. Okay. Wow. I always, when I, when I was in college, uh, towards the end of being in college, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, even like about to graduate and I'd always wanted to do stand up always. And then, uh, never really got into it. And then I think a few months after I graduated, um, a friend of mine who had been starting to do open mic because he just started he came he's like hey i quit my job uh he, he had like he worked for wells fargo he had a pretty big job and i was like i quit i just want to let's get drunk tonight and then let's do an open mic tomorrow <laughs> and i'm like fine fine i'll just do it i've been putting it off putting it off putting it off let's just do it and then i just decided to do it and i just loved it ever since yeah did you do open mics like in the in the city you're always have you always been from yeah the always yeah yeah i mean i do some road work but yeah the city yeah so like what, what are like the first couple of years i mean i guess for anybody listening that has like dreams of becoming a comedian or like like what are the first like couple of years look like well everyone's kind of different for my first two years i only did open mics i didn't even worry about making a name for me. i just wanted to get good my first couple of years i just wanted to write good material and just get used to being on stage so that was me and uh you start to get some notoriety i'd say after the third or fourth year mm -hmm. but it's there's so many different paths I, you really do have to love it though like not to do it just for money because it takes a long time to make any sort of money doing it oh yeah i, I can i can imagine yeah but there's people that get frustrated with that and they quit and it's just just do it because you love doing it no, I know. I've done a couple sets here and there. I just do it just to get on stage. And like, it's more of like a, like a mental toughness thing that like, I could like get on stage, tell jokes, bomb and get off. And like, it helps me like, where, where have you done? Where have you gotten up? I actually, my first, I, I don't even know if I've told the story on the podcast, my first ever um, time I did stand up was actually in New York city. My girlfriend's from here. I was visiting. I didn't live here at the time. And I was like, you know what? I've been like always like since like in high school, I guess high school, I've always loved comedy. And I've always like, when I think of something that's funny, I'll write it down on my notes. Like, Hey, maybe one day I'll go on stage and I go, all right, this week is like the week I'll do it. And I told my girlfriend, I said, make sure I go up on stage. And I like went, I like yeah. Googled like New York city open mics. I signed up for one and I go, whatever you do, make me go on stage. Cause I'll need, like, mm -hmm. I might need that just like a little bit of a shove. And my friends were actually in New York too from Buffalo. And so they got there before me and they called me. And uh, I'm, I think <laughs> I booked Fridays at the Phoenix, which I didn't know until my friends called me was the Phoenix in Manhattan. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, that place sucks. <laughs> They're like, yeah, it's a gay bar. We're going to leave now. I go, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh i don't know the actual bar i mean there was a mic at the phoenix that was not good yeah that was the first one and like it's a gay bar we're leaving and i went and then i was like oh i guess if they're going we're not going to go and my girlfriend's like no we're going and you're going to go do it and she got like real yeah. pissy with me and i go oh okay. are you still with her <laughs> yes and we've been no, out, we're on and off but now i'm in queens now with her so <laughs> nice yeah it's uh a lot of people quit a lot of people stop doing it yeah and so i totally I, I get that I got up on stage and I actually got a, a couple laughs. I go, wow, this is way better than I expected. It was like a really, really small room. There was like 20 people and everybody in there was yeah. going on stage. So everybody was really supportive. And I was like, okay, I could go back home to Buffalo. And there was a, there's a spot called Milky's on Elmwood. It's an absolute shithole too. It was like, oh, I could go there and maybe I'll, I'll do the same set and I'll see if I could get laughs there. And I went up on stage at Buffalo and I bombed so hard. Not a, like it was, <laughs> you could hear. A that happened, here. but that just happens. That's just the, the nature of it no and it was like all right i gotta get at least one laugh so i've been up there a couple times and i was like just pretty much bombed every single time but i mean i go up there because i want to like work on my speaking skills and my like fear yeah reduction. everyone has a different reason for doing it i'm not i'm not trying to be a stand-up comic i think oh uh, i think italians are just inherently funny people like even yeah. my italian about my material about my italian parents or relatives just always do well we're just it's a funny group of people, I think. Well, yeah, I don't know if you know, like Anthony Rodia. That I mean, he makes his. I've heard of him. Yeah. Yeah, he just he's um out of Long Island. Um, I actually helped him. I promoted his show in Buffalo, but um, he does like almost strictly like Italian American like content, and he's just a he's a riot. He's he's very very good. I but. mean, I I I some people don't like. I love Sebastian Maniscalco. I think he's great. Some people yeah. don't like him. Some Italian comics they think he's too hacky. 
I think he's, I, I love him. I would say, yeah, that's, that's a weird, because I mean, he's, I, yeah, I mean, older people love him, like our relatives kind of like, yeah, him. but I, I think he's great. He's really funny. No, yeah, he definitely mixes it up a, a good amount too. It's not like he's just like harping yeah. on being Italian over, because I mean, that could definitely get annoying after a while. <laughs> yeah, he's so Italian though. I know it's because, I mean, I have this page and obviously like it's an Italian page. It's the name of my business for Christ's sake, but like people just come up to me. What up? People like no, talk talk about it. Like, Oh, you're Italian. Oh, we should, I could, there's this great Italian restaurant. Like, dude, like I'm not like when I'm going yeah. out to eat, I'm not going to go out and eat Italian. I eat that like every day regardless. And um, yeah, I know we're all the great Italian restaurants. Yeah. Are. What, so what, what, uh, what, what else does your company do? What else besides? Well, like I do podcast? social media marketing. Like my main business, I, I, I do social media marketing for other businesses. Mm-hmm. I help like restaurants and small businesses grow their brand biz- and get new customers. Nice. This and, that. and then we sell like shirts and we actually engrave custom wooden spoons too. Those have been a big hit over the last year. Nice. Those are great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we somewhere, actually, I'm just dropping this shirt. I don't know if you could see it. It's like that picture of Sal Volcano. Yeah, and we spaghetti, put I love that. spaghetti over the top instead of supreme because that was <laughs> that's great. That was a, that's a, like our most popular shirt. It's a supreme. It's a spaghetti instead of supreme. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's the name of my like. Obviously, I'm I'm super Italian, but like after a while, like let's talk about like something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that too. That's exactly. why I, I like to have like a bunch of different guests on the podcast too. Cause like, yeah, we're going to like, obviously going to talk about like your dad and like some of the stories there, but like, it's, like when you have like strictly just guests that are like famous for being Italian, it's like the same thing over and over. I like having comedians yeah. on, we have fighters on actors, actresses, singers. Oh, nice. Just, yeah. We have like a bunch of people just tell their stories and kind of shoot this shit. So. Oh, that's sick. Who, who have you had on? Like, who's the most famous? Um, Johnny Russo, I think, is one of the most famous from the Godfather. From the Godfather, Carlo from the Godfather. Oh shit! Yeah, I actually Are went to his from the Sopranos. Anyone from the Sopranos? Uh, Robert Fanaro from the Sopranos. He played uh, Eugene. Eugene. Oh, Ponte. Yeah, Ponte. The guy yeah. He kills himself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I watched was... that episode the other day. He kills himself because his son's a heroin addict. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was he was awesome too. I think he. I want to say he said he lives in Staten Island. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I, <think it's> <laughs> no. I have a couple of comic friends uh, who live in Staten Island. They like Staten Island comics and the scene's so different out there. Yeah, I went there for the first time. Um, my girlfriend's sister lives out there and I was like, oh, this is Staten Island. And that was it. Yeah, yeah I, I love it. I mean, it's, 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 it's so fun to do comedy out there. There's a, are there a lot of clubs out there. No, I don't think there's any. It's a lot of bar shows, but they're just, oh, okay. you, you can say whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. They're very they're very good crowds out there. Yeah. So, um, when did you like there's start? Actually, sp- oh, sorry. No, 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 you go on, go on, go on. There's actually uh something called the Fifth Borough Comedy Festival in Staten Island. It's a Staten Island Comedy Festival. It's a lot of fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, really close. Yeah. So, um, well, like obviously, like you're a New York comic. So, um, what are like like when did you like I guess transition to doing like smaller open mics to like going into like the New York comedy so like the comedy club and there it is it is it is a very slow process there really is no like specific time it's just it it did did take a long time Mm -hmm. took a few years you got to really be willing to devote years to it oh yeah I mean I mean that's the same thing like I hear that a lot from like you hear it from actors singers fighters entrepreneurs like it's just like you gotta like what you do and you gotta like just put in the work pay your dues and yep that's like one thing I've learned I've literally learned that from almost all of my like all everybody I have on the podcast and a lot of my mentors it's like the same like almost like the key to success is like what you do and just put the years in work that you got to do but I mean I saw you killing it and like at the comedy um at the comedy club and then you're killing it on tiktok too oh yeah i love tiktok tiktok is a great medium i think because it's a it's a way to get quick views uh and to really show off your joke writing ability i recommend more than the other apps i recommend tiktok oh yeah for sure i saw you you have like uh yeah you have like fifteen thousand or so followers on tiktok that's awesome yeah yeah, yeah well I'm you specifically that. i was going through your tiktok and i was like you're like writing you're like clearly like writing jokes which is i think that's like the hardest thing to do in the entire world 
Yeah, 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 it is. It takes it, it, it takes time, and I think a lot of people don't want to do it. No, definitely not. Yeah, definitely not. So what's the joke writing process like? Because I mean, that like, honestly, like when people say like, what are like some difficult things to do? It's like, m- like making somebody laugh off the premise that you thought of. It's like, it's such like a crazy thing, like, to like make somebody laugh from a joke that you wrote. I think that's like the yeah. most difficult thing to do. So what's like your process yeah, it, like? I mean, the longer bit, you go one by one, you do one joke, and you're like, okay, this does well, how can I add to this? Mm-hmm. And then if that goes well, how can I, add, you know, you just you keep trying to kind of add to it for the most part. I mean, the short ones are just very rarely is it on the first try. Mm-hmm. You, you, there is a lot of like, I think if you're writing a notebook, like ripping stuff up, crossing stuff, there is like a lot of that. I usually I'll do it by premise. I'll be, oh, this is a funny idea. This this joke's not there yet, but mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a funny concept. And then you really it takes some time to fine hone it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like. Uh... What I guess, um, when did you like first start telling jokes about your dad? Because you said you have a pretty crazy Sicilian dad, as do I. They, yeah. they're all that's, consistent they're all consistently crazy and psychos. Yeah, that's the only one now, but I wanna start doing more of it. I wanna yeah. start really I was trying to think back today actually to my childhood some funny stories like that one. Cause I, I had known that story obviously since it happened and i never really thought to do it on stage i'm like oh this is just something that yeah happened. for for for, that, for those who didn't listen hear it uh so could you just i guess go over the premise and the story premise is i was starting uh college and we had this, this young professor who um and we've had teachers like this who were just like if you if your phone rings during class i'm going to answer in front of the class <laughs> and the, the teachers always thought this was like a this was like a move to make you afraid of them yeah you know, it's like a power move, kind of. And this guy was like clearly out of his element. <laughs> and my dad did call, and he's like, he doesn't understand college or anything like that. Isn't like he from he, Sicily. Uh, well, no, my grandparents were. I, I okay. fabricated that a little bit in the school, in the in the bit. He's he's from Brooklyn. He's from East New York. Oh yeah, but I mean, same same difference. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then uh, he just on speakerphone just goes off on this on this teacher. And, oh, it's on speakerphone. Whole... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone heard it, and then uh, he only called to tell me who the Met sign. Well, he like loves the Mets. My whole family. We grew up eight minutes, ten minutes from Shea Stadium. So oh, that's funny. Yeah. Like so what? Did, so he answers. Like... The, the teacher answers the phone, and he says, "This is." The teacher yeah he's not supposed to have his phone and he he thought the teacher thought he was like so slick like he thought because remember this is the first day of class <laughs> so it really set the tone for the rest of the semester yeah what did and your dad say to him again he told my fucking son on the phone no oh. <laughs> he was pissed so i don't know why but that's just how they are i mean you know this dude oh you my dad my dad is the, yeah my dad is the same like uh, I don't know if I should tell this story, but um, no, I tell it. Yeah, I got a friend. I got a, like a friend. It's like the friend that he's like the he's the butt of the joke all the time. He's like the idiot friend. He's the butt of the joke every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's his name is Frank, and like he like embodies the name Frank. It's class like classic yeah. Frank, everything like that. So I was hanging out with him, and my brother called me. We were gonna go back to my house and have like a, a bonfire or whatever, and Frank said something like you better start grilling some fucking hot dogs or something. And my dad overheard it on speakerphone. He goes, oh yeah, really? Like grab the phone, really? And he hung up. And then like when Frank <laughs> came to the house, my dad pulled out one of the many Bowie knives that he keeps around, hidden around the house. And he goes, <laughs> he goes you ever talk to my son like that again? I'll fucking go to you. Yeah, that's just it. That we're, we're very he, he wasn't going to do, I should, I should say, he wasn't actually going to do anything. <laughs> he, he knew, like he was half kidding, but still. <laughs> yeah, we're very family-oriented people. <laughs> yeah, but oh, I mean, my dad's walk. Oh, I'm trying to think of some other crazy. I mean, my dad's. There was a nurse that um t- thought my sister was um embellishing. Like she like broke like the growth plate in her ankle. And my dad walked into like, and you can't just walk into schools anymore. You've got to get like buzzed in. You've got to get like yeah, sign in, process, yeah. sign in the sheet. You've got to basically <laughs> yeah. go through a background check to get into schools now. My dad walks through the front door, and I'm like picking my sister up. I didn't even know he was coming, and he darts in the room. I guess goes into the nurse office and like just confronts her and like the nurse <laughs> lied that she, that she was even the nurse at the time she was so scared but 
my dad. Yeah, yeah, my dad was, he never really like did any. He just always yeah, like it was just a front, I think. Yeah. He never actually like did anything crazy. He just always acted it. Yeah. What did your dad do for a living? If you don't mind me asking. He's like a a, re- a sales manager for this food service company, but he's about to retire actually. Oh, nice. I mean, yes. I mean, I'm sure he's like a regular job. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, you get like a work ethic though from like your family and everything too, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He just he's turning sixty-two, so I think he's ready to just retire. Oh, nice, nice. He moved okay. out. They, my parent, he, they sold their house in Queens. They live in Suffolk County now. Nice. They're just, yeah, it's like where they live is just kind of very suburban. I think they're just. No, yeah, that's why I like, I like being in East Queens because it's like I could just like walk over and I'm in Long Island and it's like more yeah. like back home in Buffalo where it's like there's room to do shit and I can breathe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Astoria, everything's so on top of each other here. I know, Astoria is. It's such a nice neighborhood though. I was going to say, I love Astoria. They got like, I'm trying to think of that. There's a really, really good bakery out there. Um ammonia no um john piero maybe yeah um, john piero yep. yeah that's it's, it's so good i love it there there's so many italian bakeries here pizza places it's, it's good i know what's your best what's your favorite pizza spot in the city ever yeah so i get made fun. i really like artichoke basils i get made fun of because it's not for being not authenticated italian but i think joe's is the best where is that there's one in Williamsburg and there's like two in the city. Okay. You'll know it. If you see the symbol, you'll know it. All right. Let's yeah. check them out. I know I want to, cause that's like, I just love trying like all, like I follow like Dave Portnoy and see like where he puts his like best spots at. Yeah. There's a restaurant by us called Bartolino's, which is like a well-known mob hangout. Yeah. Like everyone, everyone knows it. Mm-hmm. but they're pretty good too it's just like it's this big restaurant there's no one like ever in it very rarely are there people in it it's just like so sketchy <laughs> but the food's pretty good nice nice yeah so um are you doing like sets like every week or how often yeah, do you get pretty, up much, pretty much every night um not tonight i took off tonight but tomorrow i have uh i have my show i'm doing your comedy club on uh thursday i'm doing them on saturday i think next uh, monday being the stand oh nice i'll have to come out soon because i mean i love coming to the city and coming to shows yeah yeah come by for sure come by uh i'll send you the schedule yeah for sure absolutely, absolutely. So you guys seem like you have a lot of you have a lot of followers your the podcast on on instagram yeah i mean it's been uh four years in the making almost so mm-hmm. it's just like one by one just and I mean, we travel a lot. We're all over the, like, we go to, we do like Italian festivals where we sell like our spoons and shirts and stuff. So we're in Pittsburgh. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Pittsburgh, Boston. When, where's your next city? When's your next trip? I don't even know yet. I'm like, so I feel like, cause I, th- I felt like last year never ended. Like we did shows up until November and then it was like, that's great. And then we get a it, crazy it just- online rush in December, obviously in November, December was like all online sales. And then it's like, by the time you're like, you? I, like what, I wake up and it's like February now. And I think yeah. I might do Tampa in April. That's awesome. Is it just you or you have a nice hope? My, my dad helps. My dad actually helps me out. And nice. but, yeah, sometimes it's just us. And then my mom and my sister sometimes will help, but it's most of the time. Where it's do just, they live? Are they in Belarus too? They're in Buffalo actually. Still in Buffalo. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. But it's fun. Like being on the road with my dad and seeing him almost get in trouble and getting nice. into fights with people. So that's fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had like great uncles that were in the mob. Like, I don't have any immediate mafia relatives, but my dad's not in the mob. Couple... He's, just, he's just an absolute psycho. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I think it's. I, I mean, I just had great uncles, like my grandfather's brothers, who, you know, cool. you knew grow even growing up, like as a mm-hmm. kid, you knew something was off. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I oh I forgot to ask you about um, I saw something in your bio about the roast of Alec Baldwin. Were you were you like writing jokes yes, for that? I did. I, I did write for that. I can't. That's so uh, cool. Only one of them got the air. Technically can't disclose it. Um, Can you say who said it? Air. What? Can you say who said the joke? Uh, Jeff Frost. Okay. Yeah, it was, uh, I, only, I made like 200 bucks, but it's a cool credit. Oh, it's odd. yeah, for sure. I mean, that was a huge yeah. roast too. It was. That was a big one. Yeah, I, I wrote from here. I didn't go to LA. I wasn't like, I just 
there, there were a few New York comics who just submitted jokes and got paid for it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's cool. And then you do the roast battle at the comedy club? At New York Comedy Club. Yeah, you should come out to those. Those are great. Oh, my God. That's like the really, one really thing that, time. the one thing I know, like, I'm good at is making fun of people. It's like a horrible, yeah. I guess it's a horrible trait to have. But that's something I've always wanted to do was a roast battle. Yeah, let me know. Come by. All right, wait, they, do, you, do you guys do them often? Every, they're bi-weekly, like every other Thursday. Oh, my God. I could sign up for one? Uh, how long have you been doing comedy for? Oh, gee, I mean, I've been on stage maybe like seven, eight times. If you want to do one, let me know. Well, there's also like a, a couple smaller road shows where some comics will... You can message me after. We have one at, at the club in Astoria where like comics who want to hone their grossing skills before they do New York Comedy Club do it. Okay, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk after this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but where could everybody check check you out? Well, like, what's your Instagram handle and everything? So it's at Pontillo James. That's my Instagram. Uh, my Twitter's at Pontillo seventy seven, and my TikTok. Ooh, I should know that one. That's the one where I get the most views. <laughs> I think it's just at James Pontillo ninety two on TikTok. Well, well, regardless, I think I'll just take the links and I'll put them in the description. But um, you also have a podcast That'd of your own. Yes, yeah, so we actually record an episode it's called uh, Humiliated. It's, uh, it's a newer podcast. We started in August. Nice. Uh, we, have some, we have a comic on every week, and they tell us the most embarrassing stories growing up. Oh, that's so funny. Some have been great. Some have not been as good, but today was a good one. I can't wait to put that one out. All right, yeah, that's... you can check us out. We're on Spotify, SoundCloud, all the... All right, awesome, awesome. Yeah, man, well, I can't... I, um, I appreciate you coming on the show. We're definitely going to link up time. soon and... and uh... I gotta yeah, come check you out live. All, to do. All right, for sure. Oh, All thanks right, again. Take it easy, and everybody right. listening. Thanks for uh, thanks for listening. Make sure you subscribe, like all that same stuff. <laughs> Catch you in the next episode. Yeah. Ciao. Thanks.